Hi there, uh, this is a, a topic about European interactivity experiences uh, that we've learned to offer some direction on ATSC 3.0 uh, here that's launching in the US. Uh, my name is Raj Patel, uh, I've worked uh, with a number of comp companies, the first ever Minecraft applications, CN Intellitech uh, services with blocky interactivity. Uh, and also uh, where that's born from, I've been in the heart of interactive uh, services uh, on uh, TV, primarily around from Teletext all the way through to interactivity and open TV, uh, which is a widely deployed uh, uh, OS system uh, across pay TV uh, operators. And then recently uh, working at Freesat, uh, uh, working also with Akiva uh, and uh, all the playouts uh, for satellite uh, and with uh, Freeview. Um, so what Yotta is all about is reimagining the global TV landscape. Uh, we're uh, slightly more global now with working in the US as well as into Europe and uh, uh, looking at different ways and innovations from interactivity uh, that we've uh, uh, established and learned over the several 20 odd years of interactivity um, and bringing that forward into uh, the US uh, markets. We go. So a little bit about where HPB TV and ATSC kind of crosses over against the standards. Uh, we've got HPB TV uh, 2.01, uh, which is an Etsy specification. And then primarily the most deployed areas of HPB TV is the 1.5 uh, that launched out into Germany. If we reference that with ATSC, uh, we've got the A344 uh, 2017 specifications and we've got a co couple of candidate release uh, in April that's come out uh, which has some extensions uh, to it. So if we look at uh, uh, how uh, HBB TV has been deployed over into Europe uh, we've got over 36 countries that have deployed HPB TV. Uh, we have over 300 uh, applications that's been deployed over and uh, we've got over 44 million uh, devices that actually enable uh, HPB TV. Why this is uh, common and relevant in ATSC3 in Korea uh, where uh, ATSC3 has been deployed, they actually use a flavor of HPB TV uh, running through on the devices uh, that makes it very similarities to uh, leveraging what's already been done uh, in uh, Europe uh, and that can be uh, exploited over into Korea. So uh, how do we uh, think about um, interactive applications and the, some of the crossovers uh, between uh, uh, the European standards and to the US standards? So color buttons. Color buttons have been a primary focus around in Europe using fast text color buttons. Uh, and this has been a primary driver of how uh, consumers can engage with uh, interactivity um, in, uh, in Europe. So the BBC has coined the phrase of the red button services. This is how it's being messaged and, uh, and uh, customers are able to understand what this means, both from uh, within programming, uh, also from within print uh, and online and websites to uh, basically provide information to customers uh, about how they can talk about an interactive service and give it a name uh, rather than saying, come and select interactive TV. Uh, so today's words, they use the BBC red button service and now they've extended it with a little plus uh, service. So how does this work out um, uh, in terms of uh, uh, the service? So if I was looking at linear broadcasting, this is a flavor of EastEnders, uh, 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 a very popular uh, UK Brit uh, soap uh, opera. Uh, and what had happened is that when the, a consumer j jumps into the channel, they would see a little call to action, press red. Uh, and this pre press red is their main call to action to gain entry into uh, an interactive uh, ecosystem. So if the consumer then did press red button, what do they get? They get an overlay. They get an interactive service that now allows for the customer to be able to select a, a little deeper dive, whether that's uh, watching uh, iPlayer and catch up content straight through, or maybe watching uh, a repeat series uh, that, they've, that they've missed. So these are the kind of the core features of how a consumer would now launch into an, an interactive service uh, um, in uh, Europe. 
So what does this mean in terms of ATSC3? So in HPB TV, we use the color buttons, red, green, yellow, blue, and the text button. But in ATSC3, we don't have that. That's not common to US uh, customers using fast text color buttons. And also remotes are changing down. So they're having less buttons on the remote control and going more like left, right, up, down, okay, and back up. So we need to make sure we have a navigation that works particularly well in an ATSC3 landscape compared with a HBB TV landscape. And in the background there, you can see uh, a German service, uh, Six, which uses uh, kind of a call to action of a red button uh, 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 service. So we can make com comparisons and leverage some of the thinking in Europe and how this might work uh, in uh, ATSC3. And we've used this kind of paradigm uh, here uh, in our example uh, sort of service. So we thought about some of the concepts of how we could look at that, whether that's using in the top corner, uh, pressing just the, the, the left button uh, coming through and the right button coming through, expanding those services um, so making it more kind of a, a button to try and educate because there is because it's the very first time that ATC3 and interactivity is running these kind of sets we need to go through a slightly more educational program uh, to inform customers of how they can access things what do they do what happens if they did press uh, the uh, right button and th there's a treatment there that we did uh, around showing uh, Fox NBC Univision and some call to actions and and it gets slightly more messier because that 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 call to action looks a bit more cluttered so we ended up kind of segmenting towards a very simplified approach calling the smart hub you know you can press the center ok button and press the right button in order to access uh, the service what does this mean because then now we have a very simplified uh, trigger uh, that can start to uh, access the uh, uh, the interactivity so we can put it into context if I channel changed into an ATC3 set uh, and I watched the, the sort of turtle program then I could actually see our own call to action button uh, appear it would kind of slide in uh, from uh, the uh, right hand side uh, let's see if this clicker works <laughs> Yep. So we, we slide in a navigation to saying that there's something here on the behind this channel and then kind of move it away uh, and fade away uh, the trigger. So I can still run the ATC application is still running in the background and I can still press uh, the right button and the OK. But I've signaled that there's some service there that's available uh, in the application. So if I did hit uh, the right button, then what do I get? I get a little menu up here. And so this is my way of how we access a smart uh, bridge application uh, allowing broadcasters to provide menu options and now having follow-on journeys uh, into uh, into their service so th this is allowing that then we have an extensible way this treatment of this uh, bug uh, we have different kinds of examples so this can be uh, a sports bug uh, it could be a deep dive last episode bugs so we're using some certain key treatments to help uh, how uh, how this would work this is not too dissimilar uh, let's go to the next side so what does this mean about when we bring uh, ATC3 applications and also what we've learned from HPV TV? And you'll see some examples here. So we need a very clear design and navigation uh, uh, paradigm. Um, so this is a, a HPV TV application in launched in Germany. It's a Das Erste channel. And you see that it's very web-like. Uh, you have menus at the top corner. You've got color buttons at the bottom. Uh, and so how does a consumer get to maybe the uh, Tartort uh, app? I've got to go down, down, left, left in order to access that icon. I can see that there's some icons down the bottom so I can go paging from uh, further to the right. And so it's quite cluttered and it is quite uh, a lot of key presses needed to get access to things. So this is the early incarnation of HPV TV and this is how we've now learned slightly uh, different ways to improve this kind of uh, experience. So if I look at that treatment and we're saying compare this 
with a, a BBC service, we see that actually when the person hits to the application, they go straight to an element, a UI element, to say, this is what I've selected. You can see the white areas highlighting the title, Strictly Come Dancing. And so if I was to hit the right button, then I can go to EastEnders, or if I will hit the left button, then I can go to more from the BBC. So you see two slightly different treatments that can occur, but subtly one conveys more interesting UX and journeys to customers to find content compared with the previous one where how do I get to that and it's more web-like and maybe this is the very first incarnations where web developers uh, if you put a web developer on to ATC3 they're going to think more like a web development but actually you want to think more about the TV experience to be better about uh, what you can kind of offer and I think this is happening so if you look at this kind of paradigm the focus state you see how it's flicking through the customer knows I'm highlighting uh, different corner areas and I can go kind of go left and right so it's a little bit more Netflix type style uh, so you can kind of bring more modernized versions of uh, access compared with using slightly uh, older treatments of web like uh, type uh, experiences one of the key things uh, about this is that we need to show where the user is it, it, it's unclear when i kind of go backwards in here where am i uh, i'm actually at the top corner on the home page which is slightly small little highlighter compared with do i know i'm where i am in this page the white is even subtle so even that's very hard to understand i am i am i on this single either but you'll learn when you actually navigate through uh, the application when we kind of follow on what do we think about the uh, the design we start to think about the uh, 10 foot experience the what we call the lean back experience you'll see this as terms of youtube when you look at youtube on a website versus youtube on a browser on a mobile device there is another version called a lean back experience so they have a lean back you see this with android tv as well so that very subtle treatments come through because you have to sit back and make it effortless for the customer to be able to find content you have to think about also uh, different screen sizes so if I am in the living room and I'm trying to experience the big 80 inch television that I've just bought compared with maybe a kitchen sized version of a 32 inch we have to think about how we want to use different uh, styling uh, and different UI treatments uh, through when we think also about fonts as well and legibility uh, this also comes that if you go to a 24 point pixel uh, it looks very nice uh, when you have a designer working on a PC and a screen because you can see that it fits nicely uh, as you do on a mobile or on an online but suddenly when you start thinking about putting up on a large TV screen you want to think about using legibility using font sizes that actually uh, work through and then also testing it because you you want to see different people accessing UIs and saying oh yeah I can read that oh I can't read that because somebody who's slightly uh, younger may get it or and they or rather other people may want to have more information and tell them about what do I do here I can't tell what what's what's actually going on one of the things that uh, if you use very uh, uh, different colors um, very harsh uh, 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 bright colors uh, in dark rooms doesn't quite work well so avoid using some of the saturated colors especially some of the, the, the red items and particularly if you're using white white is a kind of a big no-no uh, you've got to use off-white all of the things I think that people will see not naturally uh, in terms of large presentation that you see and on screens and uh, um, uh, sort of billboard type mo models where you're trying to show conveying big information uh, in a subtle way and an ongoing way these all of these treatments and learnings can kind of come through uh, into sort of TV uh, uh, experiences and you don't want to create these pure whites because they do create kind of high lows you do get screen burnouts as well uh, you try having bright white with text in a dark room and see how harsh that is uh, compared with if you're in the office and you're trying to then just look at that and it looks very familiar and we see this time and time again as developers uh, testing on TVs and actually sitting down into real world scenarios um, how, uh, how this comes across so 
I know we're rabbited on because we saw quite a few of the previous slides coming through. But you see in the background there, uh, that's kind of like a, a, a framework that we've developed. Uh, you'll see this across on the other side um, a little bit more. But this is what we're testing out in Phoenix uh, with a UI treatment uh, across multiple channels. Um, and we're trying to create these experiences where we have these call to actions where broadcasters can test uh, different treatments go through different experiences uh, this particular version here we've used very small fonts uh, so we've on our next iteration we've gone slightly larger less menu options to make it more visible and again this is kind of feedback coming through from uh, uh, from different people looking at it using it uh, in different environments uh, to uh, to help um, kind of educate how we can do better ATC3 uh, services. So I'd like to ask any questions. I've got more people over here. And I think we've got a microphone there. And, and particularly, you know, it's a two-way conversation here because we, you know, we've done over the last 20 years all kinds of different interactive applications. And I think it's gone through various incarnations. I think modernized versions of UI has come through uh, quite well. I think the advent of Netflix styles, Roku's, Hulu's, they've all looked at different TV experiences. Uh, and actually with the web world coming together with uh, TV worlds, we've got a lot more flexibility of using CSS and using tr uh, transitions and using scalable vectoring fonts. So we've got a lot of things that we can actually use as techniques and bring that through to uh, TV experience. So, any questions? Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Anyone else like to see anything else brief that you might have missed? Uh, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, go. Maybe a dumb one. No, no. Um, there are no sorry. dumb questions. <laughs> Never dumb questions. Thank you very much. Um, so you start off by saying, well, okay, in Europe, uh, we're using HPB TV. So if that's all application based, why has it had to be redeveloped for ATS3? Could it not just ride across the ATS3 signal as HBB TV? It, it could, yeah. I think um, uh, Korea took that uh, position. So with all of the uh, physical layer and all of the different uh, video streams and formats going to Dash, one of the key things I think that's come out is hey, um, Korea took the position that they already had an interactive runtime. Uh, it was... a, a, a See, Korea is quite smaller so they could make that judgment and because they had the, both the two big manufacturers LG and Samsung it was easier to not reinvent everything and say actually I'll take HBB TV we already have receivers in the market that does that interactive runtime so they took that decision now, I think in the US I think what what's occurred here is they wanted to look slightly longer because there are a lot of extensions that HBB TV have added on and I think they've took the position to use web sockets and use some more neutral based web development. So actually what you can do is, is just have a web application and use web sockets to communicate private things uh, um, under the hood. And so with that model, that now means that you could go five years, 10 years ahead and still use WebSocket connectivity, but without having to add more browser, uh, uh, bespoke browser implementations. And I think that's been probably the, the biggest shift is, is how far out can you, can, you do, can you look at? So in Korea, you might change in 10 years time uh, and say, oh, we're gonna change a different technology, we're gonna throw that out and we're gonna do uh, a rotation and they could afford to do that. I think in the US with the market that it is, the lifespan of that technology is still like, you know, it's forever. You know, look at ATSC1, uh, it, what, I think I heard it took over 10 years to transition from analog to digital uh, and it's taken so long. So now one of the, one of the first thoughts for ATSC3 transition plans would be something similar, but actually now it looks like with some of the announcements that's made earlier on this week, it, it looks more accelerated and you might think of a five year time span of everything being swapped out. But now, how long will that run? And I think that technology can carry on running. Browsers can be improved, uh, have more functionality, have more support, uh, while still, you know, are there any um, Internet Explorer 3 website services of, of, of ancient ones, but they would probably still run on new browsers, right, as, as technology. So I think that they've taken that approach of 
not putting anything bespoke in the browser so you should just be able to work with new generations coming through and i think we do see that in hbb tv where we have to always retest uh hbb tv 2.0 there's 2.01 to 2.02 and so forth okay thank you any other questions any technical questions i can answer technical questions as well <laughs> Well, thank you for coming then uh, for this uh, demonstration on some of the European. I think you will also see um, coming through in the market uh, over the next couple of uh, NABs, particularly in the New York one, where we'll actually have some receivers. Uh, as you see over in NAB and Pilot, we'll have the 3CE manufacturers running through. So we're having uh, both uh, our uh, framework application and this ATSE uh, kind of application doing DRM decryption and offering services for broadcasters coming through. So thank you very much.